Hey, Pepin. Yo, yo. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about um, miracles. Like, what about miracles? Like, how Jesus was so good at miracles. I mean, he's a bit overrated. I mean, okay, maybe he was good at miracles, but I don't think he was really that good. Like, people try to talk about how, oh, yeah, Jesus, you know, parted the ways, and he made woves of bread and stuff, but that's not that cool. I mean, does it really make him a good person? No. Nate, I think. We need to talk. Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Pepin. How's it going, Nate? Yo, yo. How's it going, Meter? It's going pretty good, thanks. You didn't answer my question, you just said yo-yo and then asked me a question. Uh, that's a good point. I am doing well. How about yourself, Meter? That's still good since the last time you asked me. <laughs> so, today we're talking about Jesus Christ. The the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, most people would say the myth nowadays. Would they? Because I think most people believe that he existed, but I don't think he existed myself. But uh, most people say he existed, but he probably had stories made up and exaggerated. Mm, mm. So you think that Jesus is an exaggeration of, or do you think he's just like a, a, a character in a book? Uh, yeah, kind of. So there, there's this guy called the uh, Bible nerd online and he has all these like uh, biblical lectures about uh, everything. He has all these theories and he doesn't believe that Jesus existed though. He doesn't really care exactly. But uh he brings up the point that Jesus is kind of an amalgamation of all these other different deities and people that came before and thinks like all these other stories, I forget what their names are, but all these other stories of people who kind of went through their similar things and just borrows all those elements. So he's like an amalgamation of all these different ones. And they point to like points where the story kind of changes, you know, through, throughout time. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of makes itself a bit different. Uh, but the idea that there was someone out there who said that they were the Messiah and that they supposedly did these things and that they're a good person, you know, that's that's very common. Even in the whole Jesus story, there are people who are doing that and Jesus is just one of them, but he's the real one. That's kind of the point of the story is these other ones are charlatans, but Jesus is actually the son of God. Mm-hmm. But the whole son of God thing is a kind of Catholic misnomer. Okay. So, I mean, I would make the argument that and we won't go down this rabbit hole, so maybe I'll just hold off. But um, so, so for the purposes of this argument, of this conversation, we're saying, let's say the stories are true, mm. and and the, whatever you know, whatever uh, all these all these bad boys, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, whatever they had to say about Jesus and his miracles was true. Your argument is that so what. He's kind not really of, that good. Yeah. Well, because it's like, I was thinking about this. And like, there's different things he did. Like, for instance, he walked on water. And I guess he saved Peter, who had fallen off the boat or something. No, he, Peter wasn't off the boat. He just walks on water for some reason. I don't know why. But it's kind of like, okay, you can walk on water. Does that mean you're a good person now? Like, why, why should we <laughs> praise you? Because you can walk on water. David Blaine can walk on water. Do we praise him? No, he's a magician. So if we're taking it seriously... And it's not like some more, some more magic trick. I mean, big deal. I mean, wh- wh- why does that mean I should follow you as a leader? Mm-hmm. Like, how does that like add to your, your personality? So let's go over the 37 miracles of Jesus as, as denoted in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, um, the Torah. Let's, let, let's talk about them. That's not the Torah. Is, isn't, isn't it? No. Isn't the Torah the first four or six books of the Bible or whatever? But that's New Testament. New te- the Torah, oh, yeah, is yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a hundred percent right. The Torah was everything that came before Jesus. Yeah, and Jesus is the exact opposite of the Torah. Yeah, Christians they so they have the Old Testament, which essentially is the Torah. Uh, maybe with some little additions, but it's the Torah. So it's essentially just the Jewish Bible, and then they add the New Testament on, which is the whole Christian part. Okay, so let's not talk about the Torah. Let's instead talk about Jesus. Yes. The my man Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus, he turned water into wine at a wedding. That now that's pretty cool. I mean, it's cool, but uh how does that make him a good person? Uh cuz he wanted the the betrothed to have a fucking great rager. <laughs> so he made someone's wedding. Okay. <laughs> he made someone's wedding a kick-ass wedding. 
party planners do that a lot and whoever was the party planner you know didn't do a good job in that instance but Mm -hmm. you know did we really praise party planners for you know making chaos weddings maybe Uh, they should definitely would if they if all that was there was water and i want to get crunk like praise be samantha the party planner could you like form a religion around that person though arguable i mean maybe in conjunction with the other 36 miracles i'm just (laughs) saying that to show the, the the ability to turn water into wine at will is pretty cool it, it's pretty cool but it's not like oh my god you, you you are so amazing i just love you like i'm gonna worship you day after day because mm-hmm. you know it's, it's, it's it depends it's, how drunk i am it's a party trick okay yes it depends on how drunk you are M- maybe that's part of it the person who can make alcohol is just you know out of water is so amazing because they can provide you with an endless stream of alcohol so, so I, I guess that's maybe the point of that but it, it's it's not like it's kind of underwhelming like you know if i tell you a story my god and savior he did absolute miracles it kind of changed humanity what did he do he turned water into wine did he solve human starvation mm-hmm. no did he uh, cure cancer no he, he he turned water into wine okay well, okay so we can agree it's pretty fucking cool it's cool. Like Jesus was cool. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, okay, but maybe it's not inherently good in the good goodliness sense. No, he saved a bad party. I mean, it's cool to save a bad party, but it's not like it's really cool. <laughs> it's 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 kind of like petty right. on the list of uh, <laughs> things from goodness. I have the power of God. We will have a rager. Like. When ethicists talk about what makes a good person, they don't talk about the ability to turn water into wine or throwing good parties. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, okay, so another thing he did, he healed an official son. He healed a, he healed a little boy. Doctors do that every day. And doctors are good. Yeah. So, I mean, the Jesus isn't special for that. It's, mm-hmm. and that's, I'm not saying that's not good, but, you know, what makes him special for that? I, mean, I guess maybe you could argue that back then there wasn't modern you know, medicine and everything, and... He wouldn't have gotten the help he needed back then. But, you know, there's plenty of people he didn't fucking heal. What well, about those people? Well, he drove out an evil spirit from a man. An evil spirit? Yeah. So first he saved a fucking killer party. He turned this party into a rager. Then he healed a, some guy's son from a hangover. And then he drove the spirits out. Okay. The Good. evil spirits. So he loaded people up with spirits and then he drove the spirits out. I mean, that seems like a, like, like a pyramid scheme right there. Listen, not, not pyramid scheme. What's what's the word? Like a, like like you break people's push carts and then you fix them. I listen. That's just good business. Okay, he's a great businessman, but does that make him a good person? It might. Depends what his business is. If his business is saving souls, I, I guess. So. If you got an evil spirit inside you and I drive it out, you would praise me, especially if I had wine for you after. Well, okay, so we're supposed to be believing that everything is true here, yeah. but the whole idea of evil spirit... Uh, you have to just believe it's true. Okay, so there's people in the modern day that can do this. So mm-hmm. it maybe it's impressive back then, but even people back then were doing it. So he's still not special in that regard, uh, unless we're assuming that he's the only person that could actually do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's that story about how... This will probably come up later, but he... There's a bunch of, like... There's a spirit in some sort of dude, or it's like a goat or something. I don't know. But he took the spirit out and like threw it into some sheep, and the sheep like ran off like a cliff. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. It's cool, but it's kind of like a lame use of the power, and doesn't make me say, "Hey, I want to follow you." I mean, you just killed a bunch of sheep. What about the time he healed Peter's mother-in-law who was sick with a fever? Why the fuck do I care about Peter's mother-in-law? Because she's a human being, Nathan. But she's okay. Like, so imagine we. Like, 2,000 years from now, we start talking about Dr. Gabriel, who works at the hospital down the street. Yeah. And he saved uh, Aunt Sue's second cousin, mm-hmm. who is not even related to me. I don't even know her. Mm-hmm. Who, who the fuck cares? I care. That's really cool. Like, good for you, dude. You're a good person for doing so. And I think that I think that how is an important question. If you if he gave her antibiotics, like made it made a fucking bacterial infection go away, like that's not really that impressive. But if he just laid hands on somebody and all of a sudden their fever broke and they were healthy again, that's pretty fucking cool. Okay, it's cool, but okay, let's it's, put, it's inherently good. Let's put this into context. So, 
if a doctor injects someone with like a uh, anti-vaccine yeah. or whatever, or say anti-vaccine and antibiotic, you know, th- that's not that impressive, right? Because it's just a thing. So that's his power. But what if he had a like a drug that could cure everyone in the whole world of their illness? That'd be awesome. So Jesus has that power supposedly because he is a son of God. He mm-hmm. has the powers of God, but he just heals Aunt Sue's cousin's sister, mother's law. He heals people he comes across. He heals people that he can. His his drug, his power is his hands. So he can't he can't distribute. He can't cut his hand off and give it to everybody. Like he has to physically lay hands on people, and everybody he meets that has a sickness, he heals them. That's not true. I mean, there was that girl. He's just like kind of walking along, and some girl she reaches out. I think it's Mary Magdalene, and she was like a prostitute or something. I don't know. No, that's another story. But she like reaches out and she touches him, and he's like, "Who touched me? Who stole my essence? Who got healed?" And it's like, "I did." And then she got healed. She stole his power. Yeah. He didn't want that because he didn't want to heal everybody. No, no, no. He wanted consent, Nathan, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Jesus advocates consent. Jesus heals many sick and oppressed at evening. That's uh, miracle number five. <laughs> okay. One evening he went out and healed <laughs> some sick and oppressed. So imagine there's this guy who, you know, let's say Dr. Ramadusha. Okay, Ramadusha. <laughs> From uh, India. Yeah. You know, say that's uh, Indian name. Indian to me. Yeah. So let's say we hear a story about Dr. Ramadusha who went to some tribe and healed a whole bunch of people and yeah. they all got better. Mm-hmm. What does that mean to me? That means that he's inherently a good person. Should should I follow him as some sort of religious leader? Should I, should I think everything he says is the word of God? Like if he did so by laying his hands on them, like that's pretty cool, man. It's just some nondescript group of people. I don't care about them. I mean, it's like I think you're less proving that Jesus isn't good and more proving that you're a <laughs> shitbag. <laughs> it, it so if you heal my aunt or my my sister i don't have a sister but i've had a sister you know that would mean something to me but just saying that they healed someone in the past okay big deal plenty of people got healed in the past by the way i'm pulling this list from thoughtco.com number six first first miraculous catch of fish on the lake a genesaret he caught some fish yeah he miraculously caught fish <laughs> so is the, is the difference here he just adds the miraculous kind of Mm-hmm. So, so if I go, it was his first miraculous catch of fish. <laughs> what makes it miraculous? The catching. So, so, if someone just happens to catch fish in a place that's hard to catch fish, that's a miracle. Could be. It's a godly miracle. If Jesus does it, and we should be telling stories about this two thousand years later. What about the time that he cleansed a man with leprosy? Okay, modern medicine. I mean, no, modern medicine can't do that. It can't. No. Oh, okay. Well, okay, okay, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, he'd be useful in the modern day context. Should we follow him as a religious leader? Maybe he, we should utilize his skills. He leprosy by putting his hands on somebody, Nathan. I mean, that's cool. Why hasn't he solved leprosy? Uh, because the world. he needs to touch every leper in the world, and that wasn't possible. Why did he die? Wait, hold on, wait. <laughs> he was so oh, God. Why did he die? <laughs> for your sins, Nathan. Number eight, Jesus heals a... A centurion's paralyzed servant. There's a lot of doctor things Jesus did. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so Jesus is the equivalent goodness as a doctor. Doctor Jesus. And so MD. let's think about another doctor here that people don't like. I mean, people love him, but they also kind of hate him. Doctor Phil House. Wow. Oh. Doctor House. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do it out of compassion. He's just a good doctor. He does is what he does, and people wouldn't follow House as a you know religious figure. But didn't some of them? I mean, I guess you did. Didn't some people? <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, like worship him and obsess over him and want to study under him more than anybody else in the world. Like, didn't they see him as a higher being than a normal human? For his powers, but you know, none of his disciples or people gained his powers. They just kind of gained his healing ability. Exactly. But is that not part of his power? I mean, I, it, it doesn't pass it on. It's not the, it's not the same. All right. How about the time he healed a paralytic who was let down from the roof see oh, everything is about healing here okay. yeah he healed two paralyzed people back to back okay jesus is about equal to a doctor jesus heals a man's withered hand on the sabbath oh okay i mean also let's let's say that uh, a lot of injuries and stuff are 
psychosomatic, which isn't to say that the person is not... A guy fell off a roof. <laughs> You're like, yeah, that broken leg, that's definitely in your head, bro. So he's walking off. So who knows? Maybe he would have walked it off anyway. There, There's plenty of instances of people going to faith healers who, you know, they don't work, but people who have, say, psychosomatic stuff where things get healed in that kind of way, where if you tell them they're going to feel better, they do. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a psychological illusionist that I follow named Darren Brown, and he had a show where he did a fake kind of faith healing with people, and he told people it was fake, you know, during it. And they're all, like, very skeptical audience. They know what he does. But he got, like, calls, like, years later and emails and stuff some from people from the show saying, you know, my arm, it wasn't moving, and it can move now. Like, you healed it. I don't know how. This is so weird. I don't believe in this, but it, my arm moves. Or, you know, th this little, like, weird sensation in my foot, it's not there anymore. Like, it, the pain's gone. So, you know, Jesus might as well be a faith healer. I mean, he... I think by definition he was like that's exactly what he was okay how about this Nathan number 11 Jesus raises a widow's son from the dead I mean maybe they buried him prematurely then he brought him back to life Nathan so there were these things they came up with back in the day uh, this is like during like the 1800s I think so they were having an issue with burying people like they thought they were dead so they buried them but then sometimes they weren't dead so they had this like thing in the coffin that it's like a thing that was on their chest so if it, the thing started pushing up on the chest or the chest pushed up on the thing it would kind of poke out through, uh above the grave and then you could see that they were breathing and then you're like oh fuck this person's actually still alive and then they'd dig them back up mm -hmm. so these people may not have been dead so he may not have not been doing, doing anything it's this person was already not dead and he's just like you know like kind of wake up wake up so you're saying that he was misdiagnosed as dead and then jesus ran up and like He's like, oh, shit, he's still breathing. Yeah, he's definitely dead, man. Let me see what I can do. I mean, most likely. I mean, maybe he was dead for that small portion, but then he just happened to come back to life, or he resuscitated them. And people do that all the time. There's some basic classes you can take to resuscitate people. So is your, is your argument that nothing Jesus did was a miracle, or that nothing Jesus did was good? Because you've made both claims, and I think some of these things are inarguably good. So I'm saying it's not good in a sense of like ethically good. I'm saying it's good in the sense of like doctor good. Like what a doctor does is good, I guess. I mean, healing people is it's good, but it's not like that special. I mean, I mean, there's no reason why we should be talking about what some person did 2,000 years ago that modern technology can do far better today. Because it was 2,000 years ago, bro. Okay, he was an exception. What if he built a computer 2,000 years ago? Is that not like extraordinary? So. Hippocrates came up with a Hippocratic Oath. Mm -hmm. He came up with different rules of medicine. He laid the foundation. Yeah. Jesus didn't do any of that. No, he, he just used his fucking bare hands and made people better. <laughs> he didn't teach people. people back to life. He healed broken bones. He broke a fever. He did that other thing that one time. He didn't actually... He healed only a small number of people for what he was capable of. Mm -hmm. Because he had to physically lay his hands on somebody. So anybody who was sick that he saw, he physically laid hands on them and made them better, including a leper. And he, he oh, I didn't he get leprosy. Is that contagious? Is that it's how that works? super, super contagious, but he didn't give a fuck. All he cared was that he made him better, and he did. Okay, there's plenty of doctors that do that, and we call them reckless. They die. But Jesus didn't, and that's he the He did thing. die. Well, not from that. <laughs> he died from other things. What about the time that he calmed this, a storm on the sea? You know how those sea storms are. Okay. So he calmed it. He's like, no more from you. Uh, okay, for assuming that's true, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. That's something that modern technology can't do. Otherwise, we wouldn't have hurricanes destroying Florida. Okay, modern technology could possibly do that. They actually control the climate in certain places. And I forget where it is, but in some place in the world, they control the climate. They make it rain. But That's a strip club, Nathan. <laughs> control the climate, make it rain. <laughs> See, now you're perverting things. But... <laughs> <laughs> But is that really okay? So he made it stop being all stormy someplace. Mm -hmm. Couldn't he have stopped it from being stormy before? I mean, let's make him like he's creating a problem and he's solving. He didn't create the problem, he just solved the problem. Why didn't why isn't he always solving the problem before it happens? He's trying, he's doing his best. And so, what he stopped the storm for what's still one human? I think okay, well, I want to at least get halfway through this before I start really getting into it. G what about the time he cast demons into a herd of pigs? Oh, it wasn't sheep, it was pigs. I mean, okay. 
Were those pigs edible after? So? You shouldn't be eating pigs anyway, according to God. That, that's a good point. Okay. Okay. So that, that's actually at least, you know, kind of a... So, so far, the most convincing <laughs> thing for you is when he put demons in pigs. I guess so. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Plunge. My name is Riley. And I'm Davis. And we are The Plunge Podcast. We are three college kids on a quest through life to try to figure out how to become adults. Talking about love and getting rejected by it mostly on Tinder, social media, and the real world. So if you want to follow us on our journey through life, you can follow us on Twitter at Plunge Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at The Plunge Podcast. You can listen to us on all streaming platforms. And last but not least, you can find us on PodcastNH.com. Well, what about Jesus heals a woman in the crowd with an issue of blood? What? Blood magic, man. <laughs> okay, I said that, that's, that, that's kind of weird. <laughs> he healed her, though. I mean, There's a lot of healing going on. When people use blood magic, when I hear about that, like, I get kind of creeped out. I think, stay away from that person, not let's follow that person. Like, I think, this person's fucking weird. Let's, let's not have anything to do with them. I think you have a very cynical look on blood magic. <laughs> what about um, the time Jesus raised somebody's daughter back to life? First a son, now a daughter. Gender don't matter. He's bringing them back. Same kind of answer as the last one. I mean, he's, he's pretty much just a really good doctor. Okay. What about when he healed two blind men? He could have just healed one. No, he got them both. Again, he could have healed three, four, five, but six. But there were only two. It's only two that he came across. There's only plenty of blind men. Exactly. So he should have started a clinic. Instead, he just walked around everywhere. And you no, know, he was a traveling his... clinic. Nathan, he healed everybody he came across. Not quite. I mean, just no. I think you expect too much from your Jesus. Well, so people make him up to be like this good moral thing, and you know, a good doctor. He healed people. He calmed storms. He put demons in pigs. What more do you want from your God? Uh, for him to be a, like, there has to be more to that, because what makes someone good is not just healing them. How about this? He healed a man who was unable to speak. Does that hit close to harm? Did he teach him English or, you he know, healed him. whatever he kind of language it was back then? He was mute, and now he's not mute. Okay, so, okay. He healed an invalid at Bethesda. I'm sure Bethesda appreciates that. Bethesda? Huh. I wonder if it helped, like, Marwin be such a great game. It, it did. Todd Howard was like, <laughs> wait, is that the right person? Yeah, yeah. Okay. To- <laughs> he healed Todd Howard at Bethesda. <laughs> okay. All right. You're coming around to Jesus because yeah, of the Todd okay. Howard. Okay. Jesus feeds 5,000 plus women and children. But he didn't keep them from getting hungry again. I mean, it was, I mean it's, it's good to deal with that problem, like, right away. Uh, like, like if you're someone's hungry, you feed them. But there's that whole saying like, uh, you teach a man to fish, they, or you give a man a fish, they don't fish, or I don't know what it is. What is it again? <laughs> Jesus, Nate, you're awful. Jesus fed five thousand people plus women and children. Was he teaching them how to fish though? It does. Nate, was he in accordance to his okay, own moral so values? He, so if he taught them how to fish, now he's fucking Jesus for you. Now he's a messiah. So my problem is that he is being seen as an ethical figure for teaching people how to fish as opposed to just giving them fish. But in this instance, he's giving people fish and bread. Yeah. That's not, that's kind of contradictory there. It's not. He's feeding the hungry who have no means of getting these things themselves. He is, he's seeing a problem and he's making it go away. Okay. He created this problem because he's like, hey, let's go up on this mountain and have a big speech. Oh. Didn't have enough food. Oh, these people didn't bring enough food. They weren't smart enough to. Oh, th- he created this problem himself. Now he's solving it. So it, again, the businessman aspect. Jesus walks on water. That's that's a miracle. Okay, that's cool. I mean, maybe it's miraculous, right? But does it make you like a good person? I mean, it, it's a cool party trick. Same when you know, turning water into wine. It's having a party. It's great. I'm not saying that's bad. But what I'm saying is, is that good? I don't think that the intention was to necessarily be good. I think the intention was to. So this is, this goes back to what you, the claims you've been making this whole time. When he's doing good things, you're saying, but it's not like a great, like crazy good thing. It's not like a, a miracle. And then when he does miracles, you're saying, but it's not good. 
Like he's doing both things just because they're not one in the same doesn't mean that it's not he's not hitting all of the aspects you're looking for. So when he shows off, it's kind of like, so what? You know, if you take that one instance of someone showing off, it doesn't mean shit. What if he healed somebody, brought somebody back to life while walking on water? That'd be pretty bitching. <laughs> he, Jesus heals many sick as they touch his garment. Okay. So they just touched his robes and all of a sudden they're all healed. Okay. I mean, say, see, he's just a good doctor. I mean, if he was actually going to heal the whole world with his godly powers, that'd mm-hmm. be great, but he didn't. But so this is, this is important that you understand, Nathan, is Jesus as, as a, as a being on the earth, isn't God. Jesus as a being on the earth is a human being. He's still a human. He can channel God in a way that allows him to do extraordinary things that otherwise would be impossible such as heal people or walk on water or create something out of nothing, turn one thing into another thing. But he is still a human, and it's exemplified a lot of times that that's the case, that he still has human emotions. He's still he's just able to be one step above that. He's able to be the, the ultimate being that's still a human. It doesn't mean he didn't do things that were that weren't godly there was a time that he killed a fig tree because it didn't have figs but it wasn't in fig season so like it shouldn't have had a fig that's a weird story it's a really weird story but it exemplifies the fact that jesus is a human still he still has these irrationalities of i'm frustrated about a thing and he he takes it out on that thing even though you know it's it's it was irrational to do so and jesus was he performed miracles, but he was still a human being. Okay, so... And you want him to be more than a human. Let, let's say that I am Jesus in this instance, okay. and then I'm constrained by humanity. Okay, let's say I have these physical constraints. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get crucified, I die, I go up to heaven, and then I say, okay, cancer, gone. Yeah, but then that, then you're not, you don't have the world. Like, you don't understand the plan that that is God. You don't understand the vision that they that God sees. If you have a if you have a a child and they never experience anything bad, are they are they did they ever really have a choice to be good in the first place? Like it's it's about giving a choice. It's about more than what you can even comprehend or I can comprehend as a human being. I don't think there's a choice to be i mean if someone's exposed to less bad i think they're less likely to be bad like i think a society where there's less you know suffering less like you know bad shit happening less tornadoes and less sicknesses you know i think it's better off Mm -hmm. but what do you learn from that like how do you how do you grow in a in an environment where there's no there's no contrarian viewpoint well, so so there's new kind of you know default set level in that case. So, whereas with people were responding to in the past, would say you know floods, disasters, uh, starvation. Now the what you deal with is, is everyday life, and it's kind of what we're experiencing now for a large part. I mean, our lives are pretty stable. Things are pretty good for the most part, and I think it's which our issues in our lives are small things. You know, like say money for a lot of people is not a small thing, but to many people, it's kind of a small thing. It's something that's under their control. They can make better, but uh, you know, still have struggles with it, or maybe it's their relationships. I mean, relationships are always going to be a struggle, and that's kind of like the main kind of crux of humanity is you know how we see each other and how we interact with each other. And but you're proposing that if, if, if God and Jesus were truly good, they would make all bad go away. If they're all powerful, yeah. Yeah, I think I think they would. I mean, if you have that unstoppable power, you know, why why didn't we just fix all these things? What about Jesus heals a Gentile woman's demon possessed daughter? Taking more demons out, just getting rid of them. It doesn't like demons very much. He healed a deaf and dumb man. Deaf and dumb. Oh, this time he fed four thousand plus women and children. How? He just he fed them, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of people doing soup kitchens. And again, it's not a bad thing. I mean, if it's like, I'm not, okay, so I can say that's good, but it's not like godly level good, like religious figure good. It's it's not something beyond kind of humanity. This is like a very physical thing. 
it, it so it's not like he just did this one thing this one time it's like this is the story of his entire life he's mm-hmm. always done things like this it's it's becoming bigger than yourself by continuing to do big things over and over and over he healed a blind man at bethesda he really likes bethesda it really does seem like it. it must be like a you know i'll just roll fan or something all right how about this jesus heals a man who was born blind by spitting in his eyes spitting he spat right in his eye and all of a sudden he could see again what that's weird that's how jesus works bro he, he spat. How did they know the baby was blind? No, no, no. The the man had been blind since he was oh, born. Oh, okay. So it was a man. Okay. It was a man. He he had never been able to see it his entire life. Jesus comes along. He's like, hey, bro. Now all of a sudden he's like, holy shit, I can see. It's, that just makes it complicated because, okay, well, let's imagine I'm someone who is a follower of Jesus, right? And mm-hmm. I really love Jesus. And yeah. this is really cool. Like I care about the walking in water, feeding people and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then I come to the story where he spits in some guy's eyes. And makes him see again. But, but it's like, isn't there an easier way to do that? Like a way that's maybe a little bit cooler, a bit more godly? Like see, That's pretty cool, <laughs> mate. <laughs> it's like, okay. When's the last time you hawked a loogie in someone's eyeball and they were able to see again? Uh, John, I can cure your blindness, but I just have to kick you in the balls. They're like, fucking do it. <laughs> Give me a kick right in the eyeballs. It's like, get, can you just cure it? No, I gotta kick you in the balls. Are you sure, Jesus? Yes, I'm completely sure. Just let me kick you in the balls. Listen, he spat in his eyes and he could see again. There was a time Jesus healed a boy with an unclean spirit. Boy's walking around. He's got dirty, dirty spirit. Jesus, like, not anymore. This is just kind of vague. I mean, an unclean spirit. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know, but that's if, what he did. If a doctor tells you, uh, yeah, I helped out this man. His name was you know greg and he had an unclean spirit i fixed it cleaned it up okay so what did he do exactly swiffered his soul (laughs) what about this miraculous temple tax in a fish's mouth miracle what does that mean i have no idea (laughs) what (laughs) miraculous temple tax in a fish's mouth is a miracle i believe it (laughs) Maybe we'll come back. Hold on. Let me copy that because we'll come back to that. I'll look up what that really means. <laughs> Jesus heals a blind, mute, demonic. See, they're just adding words onto these now. Listen, first he healed a blind guy. Then he healed a mute guy. Then he healed a demon. <laughs> now he healed a blind, mute demon. He's just having to like one up himself here. <laughs> That's, I mean, wouldn't you have to? Jesus heals a woman who had been crippled for 18 years. Okay. She was crippled for so long and he completely changed her life by touching her. It's, it doesn't make me want to follow him. I mean, okay, it's cool. I mean, I might go to him to be healed if I was crippled, but you know, I'm not going to be like, yeah, you're my God, you're my Messiah. Jesus heals a man with dropsy on the Sabbath. Dropsy? Yeah. What the fuck is that? Common disease. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) What about when he cleansed 10 lepers on the way to Jerusalem? (laughs) He's going home, right? He's like, I'm going to go see mom. I'm going to go to Jerusalem, visit visit that old shack I grew up in. He's like, hey, look, there's 10 lepers. See, I'm just imagining like an anime about Jesus. Crowd and, around me, boys. Like, you know, for the anime would start out with Jesus is healing like somebody with like a like a sprained pinky or something. Yeah. And then each episode, he'd like go more and more and then start to combining people like this and make it seem more and more like, uh, you know, fantastic. But then there'd be a power scaling issue. Eventually he has to heal the whole world and then the show's over. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead in Bethany. Lazarus, that's a great song. Uh, I'm okay with that. That seems pretty cool. He raised a man from the dead? Yeah. Well, it inspired a couple of great songs, and Lazarus is just a cool name, so I'm okay with that. He restored sight to Bartimus in Jericho. What the fuck is Bartimus? That's what? a place. Oh, Bar- a person. It's a person. Yeah, Bart. Like, sounds like a Roman name, so that's kind of cool, but I mean, okay. Jesus withers the fig tree on the road from Bethany. He touched it, and it withered and immediately died. Okay. Uh, showing power. Yeah, showing power. I mean, maybe you'd follow him because you fear him. Maybe it had a demon in it. Hmm. We we had a teacher. Um, his name was uh, 
Michael Palmer, and he was super into Socrates and all this kind of stuff. But uh, he's talking about how the that's the one story he didn't understand from the from the Bible, and I actually learned why he didn't understand it. It's because there's two versions. One version is he like uh, just kind of kills the, he sees the tree and then he comes back to it and kills it. It's like okay, why did he do that? But then there's a second version where uh, he sees the tree and he's like okay. And then uh, he goes to the temple, and the, there's all these money changers and stuff there, you know, ripping people off and uh, everything. And he kind of flips tables over and blah, 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 and gets all pissed off. And then he comes back to the big tree and sees it didn't bear any fruit. And then he, uh, you know, kills it, essentially. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, something like that. I'm getting it not exactly right. But the metaphor that's being made is that the money exchangers are not bearing any fruit and they should be stripped up and kind of killed in that kind of way, or metaphorically killed. So it's wrong like a metaphor there. Jesus heals a servant's severed ear while he's being arrested. Was that Peter? No. No, who was that? I don't know. But somebody, someone's, Jesus is getting arrested. His buddy gets his ear chopped off and while Jesus is in fucking handcuffs, he's like, hold on, let me spit in this guy's ear. Okay, if you had the power just to heal people and your friend, let's say me, got my ear chopped mm-hmm. off, would you heal me? I think it would be a miracle if I could. I mean, what's just you, by touching you. Yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty cool. I'd, I'd be very appreciative for that. And but you'd probably follow me all the way to the gallows. I don't think I would. I'd just be like, hey, man, thanks for helping out there. That was very cool of you. Wow. So if I touch you and heal your severed ear or bring you back from the dead, you're like, hey, man, thanks. And that's it? I mean, not to be a dick, but uh, I'd kind of expect you to do that. If you didn't do that, I'd be like, dude, Steve, why are you being such a dick? You have the power of God and you're not healing me. And so now you're admitting that he did have the power of God and that's not worth following. So he had the power of God and he, he did so little. You made the point about him being human, but, you know, it's like he did everything he could. The second miraculous catch of fish at the Sea of Tiberias. <laughs> Okay, he got some fish. He was good at it, though. <laughs> See, if he healed the entire world of illness, that would be something. But he just healed a couple people, and, you know, whatever. Nate, I think you're completely missing the point that every everywhere he went, his entire legacy was about healing and feeding, and and there are things that weren't miracles that were so important. The legacy of a human is so much more than just the actions that they took, but the things that they said and what they stood for. And when when he sees a prostitute being stoned, he he stands in front of her and says, he who has not sinned cast the first stone. You do not get to judge this person for their life choices any more than you can judge yourself for your own life choices. See, I think that's... That's, that's noble. That's godly. See, that's, that's a good point right there because... That is more of a kind of ethical kind of goodness. So it, it, my point is, like, a lot of things you're doing, he's doing is, isn't, like, that profound or anything. It's just kind of, like, cool tricks or, you know, good medical practice. But in the case of, you know, putting yourself between an ethical dilemma, so there's people who are acting immorally, and then you go and then you put yourself in the middle of that and say, you, you spot some words of wisdom, which are maybe factually true, and you get them to stop and to reevaluate their reevaluate with their lives. You know that's something maybe worth following. So I, I think with that, I think that's an example of something which is uh, maybe worth paying attention to. But at the same time, that's nothing godly. I mean, it's good advice he gave. It's it's a good moral ethical perspective. But there's no miracle to that. Which All is- right. All right. I found out more about this fish. Ooh, fish. This fish and taxes. So apparently there was a tax collector who came to Peter and was like, hey, is Jesus paying his taxes? And Peter's like, obviously. And then Peter went to Jesus. He's like, yo, they're on to you about the taxes. And Jesus was like, well, who are they collecting taxes from? Are they collecting taxes from just random people or are they collecting taxes from their own children? And Peter's like, well, from everybody. And Jesus is like, well, then the children are exempt, but... We don't want to cause any problems, so do this, Peter. Go to the lake, see a Galilee, throw out your line, take the first fish you catch and open its mouth, and you're going to find, uh, you're going to find a coin, and it'll cover yours and my taxes. So Jesus paid his taxes. That seems overly complicated. And who's to say paying your taxes is good? I mean, you not really have a choice in it. I mean, he would have just been like jailed if he didn't. 
I mean, I, I, I guess. It, it, why, why couldn't he just give him some coin? Why did he have to put it into a fish? Because that's the miracle, Nathan. The miracle is that he cast out his line, reeled in a fish, and it happened to have the exact amount of tax money in it to pay for both Jesus and Peter. Jesus pays his taxes. <laughs> that's a miracle. By having someone fish and fish it out of a fish. I think I think his point was that, and, and this is something that is said in the Bible, is that even those who are who are who are slaves or those who have power over you, you are still to treat them, treat your masters as masters. It's not your place to to overthrow that. It's not your place to 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 fight against that. Yeah, that comes to like Nietzsche's point about uh, Christianity being like a slave morality. It's kind of like be obedient, be, be like it makes you complacent when you're placed in the world, mm-hmm. and you have to reach out to others to kind of help heal you. And isn't complacency? Isn't feeling feeling okay in in who you are, what you're, what you do? Isn't that level of of acceptance part of of contentment? Isn't that what most people search religion for? Is to is to believe in something higher than themselves so that they can they can settle some of that unsettlement within themselves maybe i mean it, but it, what we people search for religion for is not necessarily what is good and moral because complacency maybe isn't good i mean maybe there's certain things you should be complacent with but maybe there's things that you shouldn't be complacent with i, I think a good ethical framework would be one in which it inspires people to act in accordance with their own values and to not just feed people fish, but to teach them how to catch fish, if that's what you're saying. To mm-hmm. be to be integral, like to be uh, have non-contradictory values, to have things which help you act well in the world, help you act good. And so, so with the instance of Jesus saying, you know, the first to cast a stone or whatever, I don't know what the saying is, but so that, that's an instance of, that's a good ethical story. It gets the point across. It... Uh, you can kind of see how Jesus is a good guy in this because he's putting himself in between it. And that that's a good kind of story to help people act in their own lives. But stories about Jesus is healing people and just kind of walking around on water. And it's kind of like, so what? Okay, so let's quickly recap the things that Jesus did that Nathan's not impressed by. He, Jesus fed thousands and thousands of people on a shoestring budget. He turned water and in, into wine to save a wedding. He killed a tree. He put demons in pigs and he healed a lot of people, including bringing multiple people back from the dead. Yeah. I think it's inarguable that Jesus is bitching. Okay. So he's bitching, but he's not necessarily good for that. He's I not, think it doesn't make him a good ethical person. The stories of Jesus are inherently good. Like healing people is good, Nathan. He's not a bad guy. He he he's a, he's a good doctor. Mm-hmm. He he he's you know not terrible. Mm-hmm. But is he is this like a good moral foundation to follow? Is this if you're gonna tell a good story like if you're gonna tell stories about how this guy's so good, you know, tell stories about the whole rock thing. And there are tons and tons of them. They these that, bagels, that's not a miracle though. Virtues in and of themselves aren't miracles, Nathan. I mean, these miracles don't mean shit. I mean, if you... The miracles... If, if you're looking at the miracles as they should exemplify virtues, then that's not a miracle. The The miracle is something that's above and beyond human capability that would take a divine intervention. And that's what the 37 miracles that we went over, well, pr- most of them, necessitate, is that there was something bigger than human about Jesus. And I think that when you say that Jesus, like Jesus did superhuman things and this is what he taught, it's saying those are two separate things that make up the one man. Mm-hmm. See, see, I could kind of agree with you in this sense. So Jesus, like the point of these stories is not so much to show that Jesus was a good guy, but it's more to show that he had the power of God because these are things that not the ordinary human can do. And these are the stories to prove that he has godly powers mm-hmm. and, you know, these extraordinary abilities. But to me, okay, it can prove that maybe. Or maybe this proves that he's a superhuman kind of person, but it doesn't necessarily prove he's, like, a morally virtuous. Right. 
that's not their intent. Yeah. So, so I could agree with that, but people will point out these stories about him, you know, feeding these people it, as if it means he's a good person or it means that his doctrine is correct, which it, I don't think it does. I, I think that inherently feeding starving people is a good thing. Well, n- not if you have unlimited ability. Of course, regardless of your ability, you can have unlimited ability, but how you choose to use it is what matters. There's like the argument that if you have the ability to solve world hunger and, uh, you know, the flick of a, a, you know, a snap of a Mm -hmm. finger. Which he didn't, but go on. But he did after he died, let's say. But if you have that ability and you don't do it, then you're kind of a bad person. We no, we need to talk about two separate things, Nathan, Jesus Christ, the man and Jesus Christ, the deity. And Jesus Christ, the man, is what we're talking about today when he did his miracles on earth as a human being. And though everything he did as a human being was inherently good, except for the time he murdered a tree. That poor tree. What about the pigs, though? He, like, you know, he asked demons out, but into a pig. I mean, vegans wouldn't be very much about that. Well, nobody cares what vegans think. PETA would be on his ass. Nobody cares what PETA thinks. That's kind of true. Poor PETA. Hey, I need to know what other people think. Are there are there miracles that we missed? Am I am I completely off base in saying that Jesus is good? Am I just being an asshole? I mean, I probably am. I think I am, but uh, am I? You should definitely let us know on Facebook.com slash we need to talk show. Or at twitter.com slash WNTT1. And as always, you can find all of our links, all of our social media, anywhere that you want to listen to us on podcastnh.com. We have a show page. Go to podcastnh.com click shows and then click our banner at the top our logo no should we do like the we need to talk a lot because I, I think they're a little bit hammed i mean it's kind of fun to do it but should we just like just say all right and see you next time all right and see you next time i believe in jesus christ the lord and savior of humanity died for our sins healed some lepers and that one time he put money in a fish I, it's the fish thing though what the fuck Nate, we need to talk. <laughs> that is a weird story about the fish. <laughs> That's a really weird story about the fish. This is Greg Williams, producer of The Spark. The Spark is a North Country Charter Academy student project. The podcast deals with young adults as they struggle with alcohol, tobacco, drugs, and mental illness. If you want to learn more about The Spark... Go to podcastnh.com to listen to The Spark.